let's let's move on here. Uh, so as always, let's introduce Anthony Murphy to the show from Bucks on Deck as we do our Starbucks on Deck segment here. Talk about all those prospects, uh, the hope, the future for the Pirates, which is still apparently not here. So Anthony, welcome. We're just having a glorious morning. This, this yeah, that, morning. I mean that was a fun segment there. I, I had fun listening to that. <laughs> I'm glad you. Oh, yeah, I didn't have fun. I didn't have fun watching everything, getting ready for that. That's for sure. No, no, I can't imagine that was fun. <laughs> they, they they say our post games are like therapy. You know right. And I feel like, yeah, like this, we have to have our own personal therapy sometimes here. So <laughs> this is, this was ours this morning. But uh, yeah, once again, welcome to the show. Uh, another week, some, some more talk about prospects, some more, you know, analysis we go on to here. I know we've been talking a lot of the pitching side because, this, you know, as we, we've talked how deep in our last show was like, if you thought it was deep, well, it's even deeper than that, probably. And, you know, like the, the arms in this, this organization are are looking pretty good, and there's a lot to talk about, and we'll still do so. But, you know, I want to lead off the show differently because we haven't okay. talked too much about the bats. And you know what? I think there's a lot of people that are interested in at least a couple bats in AAA. Definitely one, because of the lack of bats in the major leagues, they're kind of talking, is it time to maybe see some of these bats in AAA up here now? So, again, I just kind of want to start this way. Let's talk about the bats and maybe more exclusively on <clears> – <throat> Nick Gonzalez and Leover Piguero. So how are they doing down there, buddy? So I, I see on Twitter a lot, you know, they, they start spitting out the numbers and, and the stats, you know, on base streak. And no, none of that is interesting to, to me with, with Nick Gonzalez. Cause that's like, he, he, he can hit. He, if you throw him a fastball, he can hit a fastball. So if like he's getting a lot of fastballs down there, then then yeah, sure, of, of course he's going to be hitting. It, you know that's 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 not the issue. The, the issue has been hit has been hitting breaking balls and and changeups. And there's there's the guy TJ Stats on Twitter. He he does he has a Patreon. Does a really good job tracking you know like uh, exit velocity numbers, all, all you know all, all all the fun little stuff. And I I was able to. He looks like it updated this morning. I'll say there is improvement with the breaking with breaking balls. I mean, this is these are triple A pitchers that he's facing. I guess it's as close as you're going to get to major league. There's the strike arts are down, the whiffs are down. He's actually striking out against breaking pitches about at the same rate as fastballs, it's right around fourteen percent, which is good. It's just the quality of contact is still kind of, I feel like it, it is a little bit of a concern. Like he only has like a 28% hard hit rate. Um, he's chasing a lot, it, chasing almost over over 40% out of, the, out of the zone against them. But he's making really good, good contact inside of the strike. So, so I mean, at, at this point with, with him, it's, it's kind of like, okay, the offense in the majors is struggling. So maybe it's worth it to make a change. I just I, I I'm still not a hundred percent sold that he starts seeing major league pitching that it's going to be that much different. Maybe a little bit better, but it, it's one of those things like a couple of years ago where where like you make a couple when you sign Carlos Santana, your first base position upgrades by default because it was literally the worst first grade first base unit. Like Nick Gonzalez had like. He batted like oh oh fifty or oh something against breaking balls last year. So like by almost by default, you would think he would improve somewhat to that. I was I was really interested to see what you're going to say about Nick Gonzalez because um, yeah, when it, I mean like the Pirates middle infield, however you cut it, right? They're just not they're not getting it done. Uh, whether that's shortstop, whether that's second base. I think Triolo's playing a really good defensive second base. Um, maybe the best defensive second base I've ever seen, to be honest. Um, but he's just not hitting at all. Um, so the the hot start by Nick Gonzalez is enticing, uh, I think, for, for Pirates fans. Definitely discouraged to hear the chase rate numbers because here's what we've kind of seen happen, right? Once once players like that hit the majors, it's a pretty easy thing for major league hitters, pitchers. I mean, major league pitchers to start exploiting. Major league pitchers know that you start that you chase sliders out of the zone, that's all you're going to get, buddy. Like you're going to get sliders out of the zone and you're going to look silly. So 
Especially as it's watch two strikes go by. Yeah, as it's encouraging to see. I mean, Nick Gonzalez. He he from a from a WRC plus standpoint, he has been the Pirates' best hitter in the minor leagues, one sixty five. Um, but it sounds like there's still some underlying things there that that don't necessarily make it like a slam dunk here. Like there's still some things. Yeah, there, there'd be some stuff to concern about. And that's not even getting into like the off speed, pitch, the off speed pitches. Like it's a small, he's seen a much smaller sample size of off speed pitches, but it's still been just lost at the plate and, against them. Yeah. yeah. And again, that's yeah, something like a near 50% whiff, whiff rate against off speed pitches right now. So 50% near 50%. Near, right, rate. It's like 40, 45% whiff rate on off speed pitches right now. Yeah, so that's just that's against triple A. That's against triple A hitters. That's against triple A pitching. Once you get into the majors, that number is going to go quite a bit up. Oh. So mm-hmm. he had a forty three percent whiff rate against breaking pitches in the major leagues last year. So, so it, yeah, it's not gotten. <laughs> it, it's gotten worse. Yeah, <laughs> and that was well. Bad. Like some of the games I've tuned in, like he's he's like he's hit a couple of extra base hits against like a, a couple of sliders here and there, but like there's there's one game he like that four hit game that he had it was like three extra bases something like that like all of them were like three of them were against like low ninety fastballs that that just got left too much into the zone so like it, it, you're a twenty five year old former top ten pick facing a mid a low nineties fastball like yeah you're you're gonna he he's doing about what you would probably expect of a twenty five year old former first round pick to do in AAA right now. That makes sense. All right. Well, since you just shattered everybody's hopes and dreams, yeah, I tried. I, I, I segue this to the, you know, I tried, guys. <laughs> Don't blame me. I, like, Don't blame like at this, Jim. At this point, at this, this point, is for those bucks on deck something. people. They're so negative. <laughs> I mean. Wouldn't be the first Murphy. The is there hey. is there any is there any hope here in Triple A? What about Leo over Piguero? I I've noticed his numbers taking a dip here lately. Piguero's biggest thing is like it, it it just seems sometimes that he doesn't have a an actual like approach at the plate. Like he doesn't have a plan. He doesn't have a strategy. He'll go. He's going to go up. If if you if 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 Donato is upset because no one's swinging at anything, then call up Piguero and that will solve everything. Because Piguero's the kind of guy. Like there are times he's just going to go up there and he'll swing at all three pitches, and and then he'll either be on base or he'll just walk back to the dugout. <laughs> so, but but he swung. <laughs> so. Uh. How about this? this? Going well. Okay. So, <laughs> is there anyone at AAA right now who you're like, you know what? He might be able to help this this major league club right now. I mean, you guys talked about defense, and maybe the numbers still aren't aren't great and everything like that. But like Matt Gorski's been hitting the whole ball pretty hard the last couple, like the, this last couple games and stuff like that. He had a couple hits on Sunday. Um talk about defense in the outfield what is it they had like the worst outs above average in, in baseball right now and like he's he's about as good of a defensive center outfielder that that the pirates have in the system there's still this i mean the swing and miss thing right now i mean trip maybe you talk about maybe if you step step aside from the prospect thing maybe someone like jay clam can help i was actually uh, going to ask about jay clam yeah. like at, at what point do you give Jake Lamb a shot? Because he's also they, been, tearing it up. They've been prioritizing him at first base. Like, I mean, they they've been like they have like Malcolm Nunez there that everyone likes, and they they've been forcing Nunez to play a lot of third base because they wanted to keep Lamb at um at, at first. So, I mean, maybe maybe he he's an option. Like, you would think that like he had a pretty solid spring. He's had a pretty good he's had a pretty good start to the year. You would think that maybe he'd be able to latch on somewhere else, you know, with if, if that was the case and all that. But they've kind of hung around. You kind of think maybe they had some sort of deal like, you know, hey, just give us like a month or two to kind of see how things shake up and then we'll give you a shot. Um, but I mean, maybe, maybe you might have we might have to look this at this as like a like a non prospect angle as far as who can help and like who are just some of like the, the veteran guys that they have down there because. So maybe like a Billy McKinney who had a good spring as well. I don't think he's playing great in 
Triple A yeah, right he's now. Not, but... He's not doing as well as yeah. um as Lamb, that's for sure. Yeah. I mean that was that was kinda of, again, not a prospect by any means, but yeah. The Pirates first base situation right now is pretty dire. Like they're getting nothing out of that spot mm-hmm. offensively. So I mean Jake Lamb can't be any worse. Can he? Like <laughs> I, I mean, I wouldn't. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I guess. I, I mean, at this, at this point, possible. Anything at this point, when you get like a six-game losing streak, and what is it like? They haven't scored more than two runs in in the last five. I, I think. I think you're getting close to you know, like okay, maybe it isn't going to fix anything, but maybe the shakeup does something for it. Maybe Nick Gonzalez comes up in here and he looks exactly the same that that he always been. But the fact that they're willing to make a move like that will shake up the rest of the the roster and be like, okay, well, maybe maybe I need to get going here and stuff like that. Yeah, it's kind of showing that, hey, you know what, the status quo isn't yeah, acceptable, yeah. We're, right? We're, so, we're not going to sit here and just let things fall apart like we did last year. We're going we're gonna to try yeah. to do something. That's a good point. Um, all right, taking looking away from AAA, uh, what other hitters should we uh, should we kind of put on our radar that that are off to, to good starts? Well, one, one guy who, like, I've always been a pretty good fan of this year, uh, or since they traded for him, um, Abraham Gutierrez has up, been off to a pretty good start behind the plate with Altoona. <clears throat> leads the leads the curve in hits. He's at, like, 16 hits right now. He's batting, like, 350. The walks aren't there like they usually are with him. He only has, like, one walk in, like, 50 plate appearances or something like that. But he's usually a guy who walks 10 to 12% of the time. Um, doesn't strike out a lot, doesn't swing and miss a lot. He's from like the moment they traded for him. He's been one of their best like contact hitters. Doesn't have overly much power. He's like four doubles right now. That's it. But just a really, really solid hitter on like an Altoona team that doesn't really have a lot of solid hitters. They have guys, they have a lot of guys that's been there for a while, but um they're probably the oldest team in the East would, League from yeah. a, from an <laughs> offensive standpoint. Like they they got yeah. some vets on that team. <laughs> yeah. So, but he he's really um, solid. like defense has always been like his thing that would probably get him to the majors and kind of like okay, well if he can pitch in some hits here and there, then all the better. Um, but he's yeah, he, he the was, team. In he the was in, he was impressive in spring training too, and I know it was spring yeah. training. He was yeah. getting in late in games. He was facing yeah. you know lesser competition, but he he probably he was impressive. Yeah, he was impressive. Yeah. Um, another catcher too, and I just want you to hit on him because I feel like we haven't talked about him a lot. Omar Alfonso. Um, uh, I know, I, I know you like guy. him. Yeah, yeah I talk so, about that guy as much as I can. <laughs> um, he's like you know one of the only people in Bradenton kind of doing what you want to see him do. Uh, but talk mm-hmm. to us about him because I mean, twenty years old. Uh, he's he's off to a hell of a start, uh, walking almost twenty percent of the time, not striking out, which is like a, the he's he looks like someone who should be on people's radar. Yeah, and and the the thing that I like about it most too is like his exit velocity numbers. There's like he he snuck onto Pipeline's top thirty prospect list, but they gave him like a thirty or thirty five grade for power, which like. Nolan and I talked about that. Like we were really confused about how they came up with that. Cause like even this year, like he's hidden his average exit velocity is like n- right at 92 miles an hour right now. Hit the 90th percentile, like baseball America has like this breakdown of, of like each different percentile exit velocities that they look for and stuff like that. And everyone that you go through on that, he grades out above average to plus so far. And that's at 20 years old. You look at his frame. He's a pretty big guy. So you get a little bit stronger. Um, like you said, great approach at the plate, walks a lot, um, plays a really solid catcher. They're kind of split in time with Garrett Forrester there, so uh, he's getting some time at uh, first base as well. Um, just a really, really solid hitter that, that like, I, 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 he struggled at the beginning of last year, went down to the FCL. He came back and just went on a tear to close the season. And then, like, I looked around and just, like, no one was really talking about him too much. And, like, just the more that I dug into the numbers and stuff like that, it's just I feel like he's just one of the more solid hitters, especially for his age and everything like that. More walks than strikeouts right now. Just. Cool. Um, Anything else offensively there? I know Lonnie White Jr. is off to showing a ton of power. 
striking out still at a pretty enormous clip. Yeah. Um, I, I guess that, you know, the Greensboro offense, it's kind of, you know, you got Brannigan in there. You've got, you've got Lonnie White. You've got McAdoo. Um, Termar. McAdoo started to hit a lot better. Yeah. He, he, McAdoo, McAdoo was pretty rough to start the year adjusting, but uh, he hit his first home run over the weekend. He's, he's really, he's another one of those guys that like, I don't like Greensboro was going to be a tough place for me to kind of get a good feel on him just because he's was an advanced college hitter. So it's still probably a level that he should do fairly well at. But, sort of like um, Mitch Jeb, right? Yeah. That's been, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Nolan, are talking about that. it's like he, he, Mitch Jeb is a guy that he doesn't, he puts the con he puts the ball on the play and then he he can run really fast. But he can't run really fast right now because he's not putting the ball in play. So so but even then he's starting to make uh, more contact here and there, it's just it's not gonna be very solid contact kind of thing. Yeah. It's be so you're a you're, lot of you're slap your your slap yeah, hitting yeah, you, you slap hitter, get on first, steal second, and then score on uh, the next base hit kind of thing. Slap hitting college bat with a 37.5% strikeout rate currently yeah. in high A. Yeah. 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 Not great. No. <laughs> um, let's shift focus to pitching. Obviously, this is where the, the organization excels at. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll save Paul Skeens for, for the end here again. But um, how <laughs> any any outstanding pitching performances this past week? I know there were a few. I know. I know. Um... Bradenton's off to like a really rough start. I think they have, they're like three and 12 right now. So like those games have been like interesting to watch at times, but they do have a couple guys like pitching wise that have, that have done really, really well so far. Carlson Reed, he was their fourth round pick last year um, out of West Virginia. I know he was like the team's closer hit his last year started some, they're trying him out as a starter right now. I I absolutely I love his breaking like his slider and changeup are just he, he may have one of the best sliders in, in the system right now. Um, <clears throat> I think he he got like whiffs on seven of eight swings hit on Friday his last start. Um, I think he struck out eight in four innings. He has eighteen strikeouts and eleven innings pitched so far. The f the fastball I feel like the velocity would play a lot better if they would just throw him into the bullpen. Like he's sitting like 93, 94 right now. Um, but like the shape, you know, like <clears throat> we look a lot like at the shape and that kind of those kind of metrics on, on the site. And it, it was actually more surprising to see how well like the, the shape was for the pitch. Um, the fact I wasn't really expecting that. I was expecting it to just be kind of like average and stuff like that. Um, if you can get the velo up a little bit, I think that pitch would be that would play even better up in the zone if he used it more. Um, it, almost kind of like Thomas Harrington last year. He like Harrington when he was in Bradenton, it's more like a sinker guy attacked the bottom of the strike zone. He got to Greensboro and started attacking hitters up high. And then like his strikeout rate just like soared. I kind of feel like that could be the same case with, with um, Reed. It's just give maybe a little bit more uh, velocity wise, uh, you know, tick higher and stuff like that. Control will, will kind of be the issue. I think that'll be the thing that'll probably eventually kick him out of the, the rotation and is a, and a, as a reliever. But also, mm -hmm. kind of like with Patrick Riley, I think if you throw like Reed and Riley into the bullpen like right now, they can probably get the triple A by the end of this year. If if not like push for like a major league spot out of the bullpen. They 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 have that kind of stuff right now. Yeah. Okay. Um Bubba Chandler off to a pretty good start. Um, mm -hmm. Let's actually stick with AAA, right? Guys who can help this mm -hmm. team kind of in the near future. Mm -hmm. uh, Kyle Nicholas. Um, he's, what, nine, ten and two-thirds innings, given up one run so far, uh, mm -hmm. 13 strikeouts, nine walks, though, for Kyle Nicholas. Is it yeah. is Kyle Nicholas really just the same Kyle Nicholas right now, or has something changed? It, it, kind of. I mean, the the... <laughs> Kind of the same. Like I feel like he's hitting upper upper nineties a lot more consistently now. Um, which I guess the nine walks in the eleven innings could probably speak speak to that. Um, but yeah, he he he's just gonna be the kind of guy like when he's on, he's unhittable. But when like you gotta hope like there's not too many stretches to where he can't just can't find the the strike zone kind of thing. 
Yeah. I don't like pitchers. I love his stuff. I love his stuff. Yeah, the stuff is the stuff is excellent. Just yeah, need need more. Like I mean, he's walking almost a batter per inning right now. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, Michael Kennedy had a pretty good start down in Bradenton too. Um, Okay. Five innings, no walks, eight strikeouts. Um, yeah, he's, he's a upper eighties low, like a more of a soft tossing thing, which like sometimes like when you think about it as like a prospect, you kind of like want to overlook that. But then when you also look about like the success the pirates have had with those kind of pitchers, you know, generally they bring them in free agent wise and stuff like that, but you know, they're kind of drafting and developing their own down, down there. He was able to get, even with that fastball, it had a lot, has a lot of life, a lot of carry, especially up in the zone. He got 10 whiffs with it. On, on Saturday. So I guess that's not something you generally see with someone averaging 89, 90. So I, I guess control command, how well that fastball plays up in the upper levels, I, I guess is going to kind of be key with him. Yeah. He's striking Question. out a lot of batters this, mm-hmm. this, this season so far. Go ahead, Donardo. Is he trying to turn into Nestor Cortez? What's going on with that? Um, For, I feel like it's just probably something that when you don't throw it very hard, you have to try, try stuff to, to keep batters off balance. And I guess Nest, they're giving the Nestor Cortez thing a shot just to try to, so this is going to be a thing. Balance. It, it could be a thing. I don't know. He's done it the last couple of starts with okay. it. Um, um, if, if it is, I mean, he, he got, he had a 50% whiff rate with his fastball his last start and that's elite numbers for especially when you consider he throws 89 90 so if it works it it works i'll take it however it comes but yeah that was yeah. interesting yeah. yeah yeah if you haven't seen the clip um there was a there was a pitch from from his start this past week where yeah it took him like thank god the pitch clock starts you know when you're wind up yeah, when you start doing it, yeah he took about 15 seconds probably to get through that wind up. <laughs> and, he, and Cortez, he did like the, the fake throw too thing, right? Like he. Yeah, well, he, I, I didn't he, see I didn't see Kennedy do the fake throw. No, was, I didn't see Kennedy do that. Yeah, no. but Cortez. That's yeah. good. I wasn't a fan. Kennedy of hasn't done that yet. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, All I won't right. be a fan of it unless you know the Pirates are doing it and working. Then I'm a fan of it though. But yeah, absolutely. All right, Denardo. Is there anyone else you want to talk about before we get to? Uh, Let's do it. Let's get to them. Before we get to the guy who now in 12 and two thirds innings, he has 27 strikeouts. He's given up five hits, four walks. He has a 0.00 ERA. He threw 65 pitches this past week. Um, Paul Skeens, <laughs> he's just continuing to just make, just lay waste to the International League. He's striking out 19.18 batters per nine. Um, How much longer we got, Murphy? Um, I, don't know. I can't imagine it's long, but like, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, Paul Skeens is pretty good at the the, the baseball thing. That's right? pretty good at the baseball <laughs> thing. <laughs> this is why we brought you on. <laughs> I guess one thing. Let me ask it you this: because one, yeah. you know, now that he's in the international league, we've got Statcast data on him, right? Mm-hmm. Um, one of the one of the knocks going into this whole thing was, you know, his fastball shape, fastball shape. And then it was like, well, you know what? He throws 101. His fastball shape doesn't really matter. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, if there's it, like, is there any cause for concern as far as the stuff that you've seen from Paul Skeens up to this point this year? Is there anything that like, that's like pointing out to you where you're like, you know what, that, that could probably be better. So his last start, he was clearly a little more hittable. And like maybe the, the command wasn't on point and stuff and like that. Though when when people talk about like his fastball shape and everything like that, those are the kind of outings that bring up like the concern. Like if the command isn't pinpoint, and we we see we saw a major league hitter take a beat on a hundred plus mile an hour fastball in spring training. So like if the command isn't there, then that's where the trouble could start with it. And like you know he I think he. He walked like a couple batters the the last game, the last outing. Like he felt he was falling behind quite a bit in it. And I said that was this was probably like the least sharp I've seen Paul Skeens. And even but you know even then that was still like if that's going to be the worst he's going to look, then like 
okay, I, you know. The, yeah, two that, walks, eight play. strikeouts, and <laughs> yeah, yeah, three and a third. I, I think right. we can live with the two walks there. <laughs> but like, so like the a lot of the the shape stuff and all that came out a lot better than I think I was expecting whenever, you know, I started hearing that stuff. Like when you talk about like the induced vertical break and, and stuff like that, it's still not great. The fastball still kind of lines up in the dead zone, but the, the approach angle that it comes out of plays to exactly what we, we've kind of seen from him. You know, it's, it's, it's hard for outside of the fact that it's coming at you at a hundred and hundred, 101 miles an hour. It, it's hard to square that up because of the the angle that it's it's crossing the strike zone with. So, but if he starts missing his spots, he leaves a little bit over. I think his last part, spot, some of like the advanced stuff spoke to, kind of made it seem like if he was facing like a major league lineup, maybe he would have ran into a little more trouble. Like I don't think I don't think anyone's expecting him to to mow through trip, uh, major league hitters like he's mowing through triple triple a guys like they'll, they'll, right. he'll, he's gonna have sure. yeah well i like i hate to break it to 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 everyone here but he's probably gonna they'll probably be a starter to to where he gets roughed up a bit that's just the that's the nature of, of baseball like unless you're jared you're jones. Have, unless you're jared jones <laughs> <laughs> um, but there there may be an outing here the command isn't well and he he comes across like it it's against a really good lineup and, and they, they knock them around a bit and it may happen, but like when you're averaging hundred miles an hour and you're hitting your spots, you're throwing it at the top of the zone with that approach angle. I, I don't, I don't think he's going to run into that issue too often. Cool. Well, that's encouraging. Yeah. Very encouraging. Yeah. All right. Those one nothing games will be fun. <laughs> that he's pitching. Gosh. <laughs> right. All right. Thanks, well, you know Murph. what? It's it's April twenty second. <laughs> I gotta imagine two more starts probably for Skeens. Well, he, he should pitch That's, on I Wednesday guess. this week. He should pitch Wednesday this week, which means next week would be will be the first Tuesday Sunday. And yeah, then, it is. And then the following week, I think we're into May then, or we're into May the following week. I don't know how weeks work. Um, it's the 22nd. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Next week. So this one to be the 24th. So then next Sunday is the 5th. Or Yeah, so I could right. see, like, if 20. they want him to do the five-day rest yep. thing one time in AAA, then you're probably looking at – the fifth maybe being his final triple a start and then you bring him up for that maybe that saturday game on the 12th that would be you probably give him an extra day's rest going into it just to yeah well yeah I, I, we'll, we'll get a good day. idea with it too because like if Oops, they've been yeah. so if they've been so cautious with his workload so far um like most of the guys who have gotten done the tuesday sunday so far in the system like they haven't gone past three, maybe four innings max. And mm-hmm. I think if you made it four innings on the Sunday, that just means you're you're rolling, you're dealing. Um, yeah. I think Herculon went four, but he's a lot younger, less experienced kind of thing. So it, it'll be interesting to see how they – and you probably get a better idea by, by the end of that Sunday because, like, if they're pulling them after two innings or something like that, I mean – That means he's coming. It could be, yeah. Yeah. I I um you know what the more I look at it, I bet they they probably that Sunday, May fifth game that he's lined up for will be in triple A. And then his mm-hmm. next start will be in the majors. So put a circle around May eleventh, guys. May eleventh is my is my official as my official choice for Paul Skeens' debut Saturday, May eleventh against the Cubs at home. That's I'm putting it down right now. Write it down. <laughs> Loving it. <laughs> All right. Well, Murphy, thank you so much. Where can people find you? Always find me. Um, Bucks on deck, Substack. Great, great. We have multiple articles a day, kind of recapping the day, going deep, diving deeper into the um, the system and and everything like that. Yeah, I would recommend, guys. There's a there's a free subscription to Bucks on Deck. It's great. There's a paid subscription to Bucks on Deck. It's great. Um, 
you guys do do great work there. Um, if you're if you're interested in really just diving deep on on the organization as a whole, um, just just an excellent excellent uh, resource for you guys there. So Bucks on Deck Substack, and then you can also find them on Twitter underscore underscore Murphy eighty eight. Cool. Yeah, there it is. All right. Well, Murphy, appreciate, appreciate you hopping on. No problem, man. No problem. All right. You guys have we'll a talk one. to you soon. All right. See you again. All right.